JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Espresso with me, that is on Charles, because today is the 23rd of September 2022. So you have to welcome everyone. Welcome to this Friday's morning session where we're going to have a very quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, some of the charts that we, the, actually probably the most of the charts that we looked at this week. So just to see how everything ended up. Uh, but yeah, guys, before we go further as always we have to quickly have a we have to quickly read through our risk disclaimers so yep the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation it should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product as always i'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue Okay, so now then, also just before we jump into the charts, as always, a quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel, which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos, and of course our JFDBrokers.com website, which you can always check out for more information about us. Now, jumping into the charts, the first one is not Nikkei. Uh, and Japan is closed today, so yep, we're finished for the week with Japan. Um, Shanghai Composite, guys, uh, also kind of all, almost getting closer into the close. Um, so yeah, um, we can see that we have drifted to my target, the 3,071 level. Um, we have managed to reach that. But the one thing that I kept on saying this week, I said that, look, maybe we could see a bit of a retracement here. However, we didn't get that. So yeah, if you were holding short here from the break of this area, congratulations, my target has been reached. Um, yeah, and... Uh, like I said, this is one of those moments where it kind of worked out nicely in the way the way the ov overall kind of idea was, um, but with a little kind of few few tweaks here and there. So yeah, um, yes, it, it worked out worked out overall. But um, was, I was really hoping to see maybe a bit of a retracement here back to this area. But hey. Um, what I want, the market doesn't always do. So, uh, unfortunately, I have to accept that. Uh, <laughs> so, guys, in general, what's next? Um, of course, uh, the next step here is to keep an eye on this 3,071 territory, or, or 70 if you wish, and to see if we can clear that. If we can, then yes, this could open the door towards uh, further declines, and uh, we could start aiming for this low here, the low of the 10th of May, near, uh, which is near the 2,857 level right there. So, and we'll take it from there. Now, Hong Kong Hang Seng Index um, also continues to trade below this area. Um, now, if you remember yesterday, I talked about this and I said that, look, we'll see how it performs this week, but if by any chance it somehow climbs back above this area and stays above this, then maybe we could consider this being a nice, um, a nice range here or something like that on a bigger picture. But at the moment, um, yeah, it's uh, not really uh, moving uh, back to the upside. So in a, in a way, we will continue targeting the downside and uh, as long as it stays below this uh, 18,235 level. If it, if it climbs back above it and stays above this barrier, then yes, I will consider um, maybe a move to the upside. But um, still probably uh, some confirmation breaks would be needed. Like for example, um, above this one right here, the 18,861 uh, territory. Um, so, now then, uh, the German index, DAX, uh, here we have a um, an index which overall is forming a nice uh, kind of descending triangle pattern. Um, so, yep, uh, everybody's kind of watching that on the bigger picture. Um, will it end up being that? Well, uh, we'll have to wait and see. So, at the moment, I would say still... The idea here is valid, the one that I talked about, look, yesterday I said to you that if we drop below this hurdle, this 12,600 zone, then I'll go, I'll go lower towards that lowest side of the of potential descending, of this descending triangle pattern, not potential actually, it is a descending triangle. Um, so 
yesterday we had a strong rally to the upside look at this i mean look at the spectacular move to the upside and then everything was wiped out straight away and there we go boom we fell back below this hurdle so at the moment i am leaning towards the downside the cash index is sitting below this area so everything is kind of pointing a little bit more towards the downside but again like i said keep your eyes on this 12,600 zone if we somehow climb back above it then yeah uh, i will uh consider maybe a bit of a, a corrective move here to the upside uh, Nasdaq 100 so also declined uh, yesterday the in, in general the US indices were kind of holding on nicely the Dow and the uh, yeah the Dow actually managed to get into positive territory for the day um, but then everything w fell apart and everything sold off and uh, yeah um, the Nasdaq and the S&P S&P came very close to kind of break even but um, yeah at the end of the at the last minutes of the trading session it kind of sold off so um, the same as Nasdaq so yeah I mean we're we ended up being here um, so far so good I would say because look I mean I, what I said before that if we do drop below below and stay below this 11,710 zone then yeah I'll go lower my next target will be this 11,500 which we managed to reach perfectly so there we go one, one of my targets has been reached good but then I said that look maybe I'm gonna go further uh, south if we do drop below this 11,500 territory we're currently sitting below it on the cash index so that means that there is a good chance we could see this one sliding further south so probably the easiest way is just right now to draw this line like this and uh, yeah we'll e aim for that 11,323 territory after that and then we'll take it from there um, the S&P 500 similar story yeah drifting nicely to the downside my, my target is the 3,000 uh, 3,721 territory I spoke about that level so for now everything's on track so to be honest I'm not gonna talk too much about it because again it's, it's so far it's doing what it, what it want what it needs to be doing um, DXY the dollar index so yes beautiful little correction here and a beautiful little hammer or not well not really maybe kind of kind of a hammer here um but um basically a reversal signal could be um at the moment i'm just watching this but i am now leaning a little bit more to towards the downside now maybe a little bit of a correction here could be possible what you can do here and uh, is to keep an eye on that 11 uh, sorry 11 111.31 level and if you remember from my yesterday's uh, mentioning this is this this is the low of the uh, lowest point of September of uh, 2001 guys so what I said to you before that look let's keep an eye on it and let's see how it's gonna close on them from the monthly chart perspective if it's gonna end up being below it if it if it will then yes I'll go a little bit for a larger correction here to the downside if um, if it somehow manages to push through this barrier and stay above it then well maybe we could uh, we could see this one actually continuing to rally and maybe going all the way towards that 121 level so now for now let's keep an eye on it um, but jumping back into a daily if you're like I said what you can do here right now is to basically we can keep an eye on this high on yesterday's high near the uh, 111.81 zone if we push through it this will confirm a forthcoming higher high and potentially more buyers could join in but if we start dropping below yesterday's low which is around 110.46 now that's where it could open the door towards that 21 day EMA or even towards this highlighted zone the one that I talked about before this uh, 109.29 so let's see how that's gonna play out gold um, gold continues to have its roller coaster ride um, so if you're not very keen of that then this is not for you um, but uh, what I said before look I mean this is it, now it's not really like a bearish flag the one that I mentioned before because now it's more of a like um, we had uh, we are now seeing kind of a, tr a, tr a range here um, kind of a consolidation moment but the prevailing trend into it was uh, to the downside so 
logically, according to the TA rules, logically speaking, then this could uh, be seen just a, like a temporary pause before a continued move to the downside. However, for that, we need to see a push, uh, you know, a strong dollar kind of, you know, rallying and uh, maybe unless it starts, uh, you know, loses the correlation and uh, kind of, you know, they start living on, they start living their separate, separate lives. And uh, yeah, uh, then we could see maybe, um, we could see the, uh, the, you know, the dollar rising and the and gold also rising, but as both acting as safe havens. So depending on the market, like I said, market conditions. So at the moment, I'm like I said, I'm I'm leaning. Um, well, actually, I'm not leaning anywhere actually because I'm just observing this one because it's currently ranging. So I don't like to trade trade these um, unless it's a, like a very very you know, quick scalp or something like that. But even then I'm kind of, you know, putting myself at risk, a lot of risk, because if suddenly this starts blowing out through one of the sides, then yeah, I mean, I, this is where it could take me out easily. So that's why, you know, always have your stop loss in place either way. So um, just in order to protect yourself and only risk what you're willing to lose. Um, now, in terms of the upside here, the same analysis is valid. The 1689 level, that's what I'm keeping an eye on here for the upside, for the downside. Um, um, yes, I'm still watching this whole area between the 1677 and the 1681 levels because if this if this continues to provide resistance, yep, I'm gonna lean towards the downside and we might see this arrow working out nicely. Silver, guys, silver. Um, this one's pushing a little bit to the upside. And look, I mean, I, I talked a lot about this commodity this week, and uh, basically you can see why because it's kind of. Uh, doing something a little bit opposite than gold it's actually giving us a little bit or giving bulls a little bit more hope here um, but I would say that uh, still a break of this uh, psychological 20 uh, mark is required so in other words for now just where I'm playing the waiting game uh, WTI oil um, we are still stuck here so I'm not really doing much here I'm just observing the price action um, I need that confirmation break through this 81.21 level I mentioned this uh, this week already and I need to see a, a break through this downside line and maybe this 90.17 level as well in order to get a little bit more excited with the upside so Again, for me right now, it's just, you know, I'm just kind of observing this one. Now, um, Ripple, guys, Ripple is ripping to the upside. There we go. I mean, explosion, nice explosion. And look, I talked about this and I said that as long as it stays above this 108 EMA, I'm bullish and I'm going to aim for this 208 EMA. Well, it exceeded my expectations. It kind of reached my target, the 0.4670. That's great. But it actually started reaching my other target, the 0.5656. Almost. Um, so I would say um, great um, for Ripple, for Ripple owners, um, but not very good for, um, you know, for the rest of the uh, other crypto owner owners. Um, because, of course, if you look at Bitcoin, Ethereum, like Litecoin, those are just stuck somewhere. We're like, yeah, they're having a bit of a move here. But, of course, Ripple is enjoying the moment. Uh, I think that because of the SEC, um, I think that there are some positive reports coming out that they are, you know, some winning some deals or something like that. I think, if I'm, like I said, double check that information, guys. Uh, have a read through if you're interested. So... But that's what I uh, found out quickly that um, because they were involved in a long kind of long lawsuit um, for, for a year or two or something like that. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, now there, I think there's some progress in favor of uh, Ripple. So yeah, let's see if this can um, continue rallying. So yeah, con uh, good good moves for now. Let's see if this how far this can go. Um, AUD USD. Mm. Oh, by the way, in terms of Ripple, if you're not comfortable with this right now, let's say jumping in right at this point, <clears throat> um, if you're not, um, you know, comfortable to join in, join, jump in somewhere here, don't worry, guys. There will always, be, always will be an opportunity. We will probably have some sort of a retracement. And the fact that other cryptos are not picking up, then yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be like this. Either the other cryptos are going to pick up and start pushing higher, or this was going, this one's going to correct earlier, you know, and kind of adjust nicely with uh, the other cryptos. And then at some point, maybe they all of them will, will go uh, to the upside. But at the moment, it's only Ripple, AUD, USD. 
Um, so that's why with Ripple, sorry, uh, that's why with Ripple, I mean, this could be just, um, you know, a little short term momentum trade. So, you know, just keep that in mind. So if you're thinking that all others might start jumping, no, in general, the crypto world is in a little bit of a, a winter. Um, fancy, modern, you know, cool, uh, trendy name to use, uh, with crypto winter. So, uh, yeah, in a way, like I said, and, and it, the, the, the push here that we are seeing, it might be just based based on the news, you know, like and but if it stabilizes and still everybody sees, you know, don't doesn't see crypto as a good investment right now, then yes, we could see a reversal back to the downside. AUD USD for the third time um, continues to trade below the 0 0.6680. So great. Um, next target is the 0 0.6680. 65 is 70 territory we managed to reach that target this is what this is what i was talking about and then after that my next target is the 0 0.6506 um well i'm gonna leave it here for this week uh, to be honest i want to see how today's day is going to trade out i'm to be honest uh, this has played out nicely for me so a drop below the 0 0.6680 led to this uh one of my targets here the 0 0.6570 so yep that's good good result um now the question is can we see maybe a rebound or something like that so that's why i'm going to leave it for today and just going to observe this and um do something about it maybe next week but we'll talk about it on monday AUDJPY, so this one's continuing to travel nicely to the downside. Now, uh, if you remember, I talked about this and I said that if we do drop below this 95.75 territory, then yeah, I will go lower. My next target is the 94.77, which I actually adjusted yesterday, if you remember. Um, and uh, yeah, and uh, I am, uh, and then I said that I'm targeting the 100 day EMA or this 93.07 level. Well, we reached the 100 day EMA, so that's good. Now the question is, can we reach this 93.07? Um, I don't know. I'm going to tell you honestly, this one right now at this point, because for example, USDJPY is drifting nicely to the downside. I'll get to that in a bit. Um, there is a chance. So I would say this way, as long as we're going to stay below the 94.77, uh, yes, I'm going to go aim lower. But again, initially, I'm targeting this 100 day EMA because I want to see if this is going to hold again uh, and somehow I'm, I'm feeling that it might hold here maybe you know uh, so keep that in mind um, if we clear this 100 day EMA then yes straight away I'm targeting this 93.07 and maybe this even upside line but I, at the moment I'm just going to be very careful and cautious USD JPY so this is what I was talking about look at this yesterday we had a beautiful push to the upside 145 level got violated we push higher but we failed to stay above it not only that we f we broke the upside line and this is what I kept on talking. They said that if we do break this upside line, my next target is the 21 day EMA. But if that gets cleared, then the 139.39 level, that's what I'm going to be aiming for. But um, one of my targets got reached, the 21 day EMA. So we're currently resting on it. <clears throat> um, so let's see if we can actually now drop again below this 21 day EMA and below this 141.50 level. Um, and we, if we can do that, then yes, I'll aim for that 139.39 zone. Oh, by the way, keep missing um, Uwe. Uh, yep, I can see you there in the chat room. Good morning to you too. Uh, a bit late today, Who you or me. Um, yeah, uh, I think I was on time. So yeah, uh, but you know, I hope I'm happy to see you here. I'm happy to see everybody else here as well, guys. I mean, just you know, uh, so I uh, thank you very much for joining in, everybody. Um, USD CAD, guys, USD CAD. So, this one's interesting. This one's very interesting. Um, it's really, really tempting to go short, but um, given the week we had, um, <clears throat> um given the week we had, um, I would say it's too good to be true uh, if you're looking from the short-term perspective I mean it, it is looking attractive yeah to go short but too good to be true so and that's why I'm not gonna rush into anything because also we have the retail sales coming out from Canada today that's gonna be quite interesting and if those disappoint then yeah we could see uh, we could see you know USD CAD uh, traveling further north and also if oil starts drifting lower this could support the upside so that's why I'm saying so uh, on a normal week or, or normal week I would say average kind of you know without any big news big events uh, week then I would say yeah I mean we could go maybe for a bit of a down uh, down move <clears throat> but um, if um, like I said at the moment I wouldn't touch this 
it's like I said, on, at one, uh, it's really, really <clears throat> itching my finger to kind of click on that cell, but um, again, I don't want it to do that yet because again, just because of the way everything's shaping up. Look, if um, if you're gonna say, if you suddenly, let's say, don't enter a cell and then, you know, it, did, it does drift lower and falls back below this uh, upper side of the rising channel, honestly, don't kill yourself for that because it's uh, it's the market. You can it's, you never can you know uh, guess it hundred percent because um, it still is the market. It still is a, a partially a gamble. So if you if it does drop back below this, just try to figure out yourself a way how to position yourself nicely and maybe take advantage um, you know of a further decline or something like that. So that's why I would say at the moment I'm just gonna observe this one and um, yeah I'm not gonna really do much and I'm gonna keep it maybe for next week um, because like I said I tr I like to be safe than sorry so yeah let's let's you know let's see how that's gonna play out okay US dollar against the Turkish lira now yesterday I was hoping to see maybe a little bit more action here but hey um, so let's be, let me just do something like that so I think so yesterday we had a spike we had a push you know we created a new all-time high yesterday um, reaching the 18 point 41 level approximately around there now we're again we're pushing through the previous all-time high so that's a good positive sign um, can we continue that well I'm gonna wait and see again at the moment I the only thing that I'm considering here is probably a short however I'm, I'm I did not receive my signal yet so I do like the short op, uh, option on this one but I have not received my signal yet so if you're thinking that you might go here um, to the downside right now let's say you want to risk it okay you can do that but then definitely have a stop loss in place I mean don't uh, let's say don't go crazy on this because again this could shoot up easily to the upside again so and given the fact that we are near this key uh, resistance barrier or which we are currently overcoming that could you know lead to some higher levels and because we're more buyers could join in here maybe look maybe everybody's already itching for that 19 level in general so again you know uh, be 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 careful with pairs like that they do present themselves uh, with opportunities but um, at the same time they might take you out very very quickly uh, GBP CHF we quickly adjust this look at this I mean this is just spectacular and once one thing that's really a little bit annoying here from my side is that I missed this move because I was talking about this and I started doing something else and working on something else and I've missed the um, I've missed the move but Hey, this is, you know, this is me. I mean, um, uh, I'm not going to chase the market yet because, look, I mean, we had a spike. We had a huge spike to the upside. That's great. If you are on, on somewhere on this trade, congratulations, guys. I mean, this was a very, 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 very good move. Yesterday, I talked about this and I was, you know, I was saying that, look, I'm still bearish because it's just going further, uh, further, you know, south. And uh, look, look at it this way. Um, if you took a gamble, for example, and it was a gamble because because you couldn't let's say you know from the technical perspective um, unless maybe you know it pushed through the low of this of the yesterday and then maybe you know you could have maybe took to look at that but hey it's not really picture perfect but if you somehow manage to fluke it and uh, just get it congratulations um, congratulations but now let's say what can we do here next well this is where the point is that let's say if you're looking for some downside um, I'm gonna stick to this area I'm gonna stick to this level the 1.0815 in order to go further south uh, because a nice good break below this would confirm a forthcoming lower low um, however that means that there is now potential for some maybe an upside we did get a nice good move to the upside yesterday so maybe we could see a continuation move however I'm not saying that maybe as strong as the yesterday's but um, maybe we could see a little retracement here maybe towards oh yes maybe looking looking at a good level here this 1.0947 uh, maybe we could see a little retracement or somewhere around here if it holds now beautiful rebound here could be possible to the upside towards this highlighted zone <clears throat> so again uh, this is me probably trying to see something where maybe it's not but hey we know this is part of the 
game here and part of trading so you're also always trying to you know predict something so let's see let's see the, let's see this way then this is going to be my ideal scenario maybe see a little correction here test this area and then uh, if it holds rebound from it and push it back to the upside um, but if it starts falling lower here now the last kind of uh, option maybe for the bulls could be to come in here somewhere near the 1.0881 um, but again, uh, let's see, let's not rush into anything. Maybe it could drift all the way here and then rebound from here and then go higher. But um, init initially I'm targeting, um, I'm keeping an eye on this 1.0947. Uh, GBP USD, so very quickly on that one, um, continues to slide, so nothing new to be honest. Um, <clears throat> Uh, my target has been reached, the 1.1240, so yeah, I mean, everything's nice. Everything's nice here. Um, I think for this one I need to jump into a uh, monthly chart, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, uh, that's the inside swing high of the uh, the February, <coughs> of, or in other words, the highest point of February of 1985. We're, we're there. Um, the question here is, can we see this monthly candle trading and closing below this 1.1414 level that's for me that's going to be the main question for me this till the end of this month if by any chance we reverse back above it and stay above it then we'll get ourselves a nice false breakout on the monthly chart so keep that in mind guys um now your jpy um sliding nicely yesterday i talked about this and i said that look if we do drop that was the low if we do drop below this 141.15 yeah i'll go lower and <clears throat> look at this it worked out perfectly because when i was talking about this we had a bit of a retracement um this was the kind of the low of that day and uh, look at this we broke it nicely and we drifted all the way towards my target i mean this is now this I would say, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, a hole in one, uh, and this is a good home run, uh, basically touchdown, perfect touch. I mean, I'm I'm running out of adjectives how to describe this, but um, or metaphors. Um, yeah, we've managed to reach this perfectly. This 138.70 level, uh, together with the 108 EMA. We're now I'm now currently keeping an eye on this one. Um, if we do clear that area, I'm going to aim for that 208 EMA. Simple as that. With the, in terms of the upside, now for the upside, I would like to see a break of this downside line, and then kind of I would go higher. But at the moment, we're nowhere here. So the uh, I would say the um, the upside scenario, uh, yeah, we could see a, maybe a retracement here, but only maybe up until this 21 day EMA, and then a reversal back down. So again, I'm not really very keen right now with the upside unless I see some sort of a, a strong, uh, you know, uh, signal or something like that. Uh, Euro USD. So still trading below that 0 0.9864 territory right there. And uh, yes, of course, this is looking quite bearish. So I would say, yeah, I'm, I'm going to continue aiming lower as long as we stay below this hurdle, below the 0 0.9864. If we stay below it, then yes, I'll go further south. So simple as that. So um, in terms of the next target, by the way, in terms of the next target, ideally, I am looking at this 0 0.96. Uh, 0 0.9610, 0 0.9594 territory, somewhere around here. Look at how well this acted as a good area of resistance and support at the same time. So, yeah, perfect target. Let's see if we can reach that. We're not really far away, to be honest, from it. So, might as well, you know, end up reaching it. I, the question is, will it be this month? Well, again, this is a good question. I unfortunately don't have a crystal ball, so I would just can say one thing. As long as we stay below this hurdle here, the highlighted zone, then yeah, I'll continue aiming to the downside. So guys, um, that's it for this session, for this week. Um, I'm really happy for you joining in this week. I'm really happy uh, to see you here, guys. Uh, thank you very much. Really, really appreciate that, that you've joined, the, you know, this week in general. So, um, hope you found this useful. I hope you'll have a fantastic trading day today. And uh, of course, as always, I say on Fridays, it's Friday, guys. Don't overtrade. Um, if you see, you know, something that's not working in your favor, just leave it because don't forget that there's always next week. And um, you know, you need to kind of sometimes learn that you know, if it's let's say not working out, just leave it straight away. That's the first signal for yourself. 
uh, because how many times did I, you know, you're, and don't try to kind of revenge trade or something like that. Let's say if you, you know, you did good in the beginning of the week, then let's say, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, you didn't do very well. Um, and, uh, today you're thinking, oh, I'm going to recover everything, you know, that, um, everything that, you know, I've, I've managed to lose in the past two days or something like that, then that's the bad attitude to come in. And you'll see that you'll always kind of lose. So unless you you kind of make it something, because then the emotions kick in. So, you know, that's where we're trying to remove here. So, but anyway, anyways, enough lecturing. Uh, you, you know all that better than me. So thank you very much, guys. Uh, Rudy, yep, I can see you there in chat room. Enjoy your weekend too. Enjoy, everybody enjoy your weekend. Go and relax, and I'll see you on Monday, as always, 6 o'clock GMT time. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye.